Let me start with you, Abdul, since you've got the numbers. 55.1 index points, so tailing off a little bit. Are you happy with the outcome of, of this? I think we are reasonably happy. Uh, the absolute level is still 55.1, still above the critical 50 level. I think if we look at the, some of the components of that, uh, the new manufacturing orders, for example, still stabilizing above 61, and also some of the expected business conditions index uh, are rising quite sharply as well. Uh, are you seeing this in the manufacturing sector? So when we get these PMI numbers coming out showing 57 or 55, within the manufacturing sector, are you actually seeing the growth that's indicated by some of these indices? Yeah, I, th I think these indices uh, show a trend, what's, what's likely to happen. It's also forward-looking, so what's the expectation uh, for the next quarter? Uh, but we must realize that since 2008, uh, we had a massive dip in 2009, and which started coming back in 2010. Um, so we're coming off a very, very low base, and I think that that's indicated by the, 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 the lagging indicator on any of these is, in fact, the um, uh, employment, okay? And that's the, that's the per uh, poorest performing. It's the one that's below 50, and I think that that is because uh, companies were perhaps a little bit conservative in, in, in cutting back, so they've got some spare capacity, and you're also seeing it coming through in your unfilled orders or your backlog of sales orders. Um, so th things are positive, but we, 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 we are uh, very far away from reversing the deindustrialization trend that we've seen in South Africa over the last 20 years and particularly over the last two years. So it's, it's positive, but it's not something that, that, that we can say, well, everything's, everything's back to normal. We do need support. We need access to, to, to finance customers and need access to finance that needs to, the banks need to be freeing up a little bit more, um, both in terms of their, of, of their lending. I think there are potentially some exciting developments for local manufacturers on uh, um, government procurement uh, that's going to happen in hopefully the second half of this year. Um, so conditions are, are, are good. Uh, they're better than they were a year ago or two years ago, but hell, we wouldn't have been sitting here if they were worse. <laughs> yeah. Abdul, um, talking about jobs, because the, the employment index has been negative, apart from February this year, yes. it's been negative for a year now. At That's what right. point in the cycle and in, in the recovery mm. do companies actually start rehiring? Yeah. That's very really difficult to, sell, to tell because clearly it differs from company to company. What we have seen is that, uh, especially if you look at the motor manufacturing sector, that has uh, risen quite sharply over the last 12 months or so. <coughs> Excuse me. And a uh, key driver of that has been the export market. Um, unfortunately, a lot of that has been going through productivity gains. So that hasn't required additional labor, for example. Uh, a lot of the uh, technology intensive uh, sectors, for example, has also recovered quite nicely. Uh, but again, that doesn't require employment. So the employment intensive sectors, unfortunately, is lagging still. And that uh, we can see in the numbers as well. Uh, where, where do you see the soft spots? I mean, you work for Bell Equipment. So are, are you guys hiring? Because I, I know that we have seen a pickup in those big yellow tractors yeah. and things that, that you sell. Are you yeah. hiring? Where, where are the soft spots? Who's not hiring? We, we, we are hiring. And I think it's your labor intensive businesses. And Bell, despite being part of, of uh, vehicles, is it's very much the labor intensive end rather than the capital intensive end. So it's mm -hmm. pretty easy to put an extra 50 cars through your, your your production line um, to 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 put another three trucks through your product uh, through our production line. We have to go back and add those skills. So I think uh, we're going to see the employment starting picking up and showing in the employment numbers rather than just in the PMI uh, when your more labor intensive industries, your clothing, your textiles, your uh, uh, heavy manufacturing, your job shops, your metals, uh, those people rather than your capital intensive, your, your chemicals, your automotives, uh, etc. Well, I, I know that the manufacturing circle feels that the, st the strength of the RAND is hampering the sector at, uh, at this point. Uh, your, your view on that, is the RAND holding us back? What, what level of RAND would be optimal to help grow the, the, the manufacturing industry? Yeah, I think speaking to many manufacturing concerns, they typically say between 8-rand and 8-rand 50 uh, is where competitiveness uh, steps in again. Uh, so again, given the high labor c component in some of those industries and given our unfortunately uh, inflexible labor environment at certain uh, industries as well, I think a, a RAND level of around 8 to 8 rand 50 is probably ideal. So at current levels, it's still very, very difficult. Guy, you, your view on that? Because we were chatting to Invector Holdings just a short while ago and they import components which they then put into their machines or their bearings and things to sell on to people. So they're seeing the RAND from both directions. So you don't want to RAND too weak because that uh, affects the imports. What sort of level would the manufacturing circle like to see for the RAND? Uh, we would like to see it quite a bit weaker. I think there are two types of, of businesses out there. There are those who import, like uh, Invector, 
and even on their heavy equipment side, they also import those fully built up. Uh, and then there's local manufacturers who compete with the importers. Um, if, you're a, if you're a net uh, uh, RAND value adder, uh, then you want to see uh, the, the RAND quite a bit weaker. If you, if, for example, agriculture has got a po positive balance of trade, but looking at imports versus exports, but 35% um, of their imports, 35% uh, of their costs are imports, so they actually want to see a stronger rand. So, but we just think that that uh, it's more important uh, to start absorbing some of this uh, 25 to 45% unemployment or underemployment that we have in this country, and that's going to make us a lot more sustainable. And that's why we're looking for um, a. a a weaker rand. Um, I'm not going to put a figure on it, but uh, uh, 690 is a lot better than 6, and 790 will be a lot better than than, than, than 690. Um, the more it goes, the more we can be adding value locally, the more we can compete, the more we can uh, start redressing that imbalance of trade that we have at the moment. Now, there's a big focus on unemployment, and we know that rate sitting just about 25% at this stage. There's also a focus on skills, because we know there are openings out there if we had the skills for it. Is this a, a problem in the manufacturing industry as well where we don't have enough skilled workers to fill those gaps? I think unfortunately that is the reality in South Africa is that quite a few of our uh, skilled employment have uh, actually left the country as well. So clearly if one looks at the manufacturing in terms of the textile industry, uh, typically uh, entry level workers they are plentiful and uh, that's uh, unfortunately not where the skills are required. So typically skilled labor, they get attracted to overseas markets, et cetera. So there is some uh, drain in terms of those skills levels as well. Well, we've talked about the RAND. We've talked about skilled workers. We've talked about access to finance. Anything else that's hampering growth in this sector, Guy? We'd like to see more aggressive implementation by government and things such as the Industrial Policy Action Plan, the new growth path. And I think picking up on what we said now, particularly focusing at absorbing some of that unskilled and semi-skilled workers because if we focus too much on advanced manufacturing all we're going to do is aggravate the existing skills problem and we've got to get a lot of people off, off out of poverty into some kind of uh, semi-formal or formal employment.